Welcome to Exploring the Mystical Side of Life. This is Linda Lang from ThoughtChange.com, and I'm here today with Scott Mendelker. Scott is a writer, a teacher, and a spiritual counselor with many, many years' experience, and we are delighted that he is our guest this week on Exploring the Mystical Side of Life. Welcome, Scott. Thank you very much, Linda. Thanks for having me. Now, Scott, you have a following on YouTube, lots of raw teachings. I have a, a, over 700 videos, and um, those 700 videos have been over the last six years, and uh, as you say, include um, line by line, session by session, readings and commentary on the Law of One series, the raw material, which is channeled from 1981 or so to 84, uh, 106 sessions of Q&A with the uh, so-called discarnate entity, but actually what, who they would call themselves a six-dimensional elder benevolent extraterrestrial group. So pretty yeah. hardcore. It's, it's quite an advanced metaphysics. Yeah, I would say six dimension. Yeah, I mean, and the thing about dimensions is it correlates with the chakras. And so their cosmological model of cosmology is very much um, akin to the Hindu notion of seven chakras. So the seven chakras of, you know, Hindu yoga uh, that Buddhism has some comment on, but, you know, not all traditions of Buddhism go into chakras. So chakras, particularly as described in Hinduism or yoga, fit perfectly a, a sequential development of soul evolution through the densities or, di or dimensions. So my, my second book is called Universal Vision, Soul Evolution and the Cosmic Plan. And so the cosmic plan is soul evolution through the dimensions. And that really is sequential development uh, and balancing and coordination of all seven chakras. That's actually very interesting because there's a lot of spiritual teachers that don't go to that level with chakras. You know, they correlate it more to this 3D life with a little bit of, you know, the upper chakras being a little bit more spiritual in nature. But to consider that each one is a dimension and a level of evolution. Yeah, well, you see, um, you know, I, I've basically been involved. or I mean, I started studying Buddhism 40 years ago when I was in the middle of high school with the Dhammapada which is considered to be sayings of Gautama Buddha himself during his life 2,500 years ago. When I was 18, I started, I learned meditation from the, the early tradition, Theravadan, early Buddhism. So breath, mindfulness practice, also called Vipassana today. And I went to Thailand and India and lived in temples for just a few months. But since then, you know, since 1980, been doing meditation. So I have a BA in Buddhist studies and part of the 700 videos or talks on my YouTube channel are many on Buddhism or key principles of Buddhism. And so Buddhism, you know, presumes reincarnation, <laughs> not just afterlife, and not quite soul, but not too different than soul. You know, a new age or a Hindu or a theosophical notion is soul. Even, you know, Christian esoteric talks about soul. But it's not only afterlife. It's not only intelligent design, meaning God or a creator or purpose in creation, but reincarnation and karma. And that means that uh, we had past lives and we'll have future lives and development of consciousness equals the development of the chakras. And when one has finished, you know, particular learning and development at any one planetary dimensional level, uh, one has made a sort of adequate development of the chakras in consciousness up to that planetary dimensional level. And so Earth is considered a planet for souls who have not yet learned to love, meaning souls who are working in the first, second, and third chakras, which is called the lower triad, one, two, three. And that's where all our problems come from or are associated with in terms of energy. In terms of consciousness, we talk about distortion, and psychopathology and neurosis and emotional wounding unhealed and old imprinted pain defense mechanisms and you know everything in psychology we evolve from dimensional level to dimensional level 
and our life is basically infinite <laughs> and goes on forever as we develop all the seven chakras and all potentials of consciousness and all higher dimensional levels, and then we return to the source. Okay, Scott, there's a lot in there. I have quite a few questions from what you just said. The first being, uh, is maybe just a statement that we as humanity tend to like the easy button and we kind of think we can, you know, evolve through all of our chakras in one lifetime, become enlightened, la-di-da, here I am. That's not the way it works, is what I'm hearing from you. It's nearly never that way. I would agree. And people, people have no, I mean, if you read Buddhism, you'll be humbled very quickly. <laughs> Buddhism has a very, very high standard. And uh, basically there are three pillars we can say in terms of principles uh, spoken in Buddhism um, regarding the path to awakening. And it's basically called Shila Samadhi Prajna, or Shila means virtue or morality or ethics, you know, do no harm. Right speech, right action, um, right livelihood, you know, which basically is not a hell of a lot different than the Ten Commandments. You know, don't make trouble. <laughs> the first five are basically don't kill living creatures and don't have them killed and don't harm them physically. Don't lie. Don't steal. <laughs> um, don't do sexual or intoxicants harming of self and other. So we have a long way to go. Yeah, and that's just the first step. That just gets you in the door. That's nothing. That just, that can get you to heaven. And it depends on what heaven means too. <laughs> you know, the, the evolution, soul evolution, metaphysics, cosmology is a whole lot more complicated than people think. And so, you know, <laughs> you, can, you can get to heaven by um, sincere moral, moral living, you know, do no harm. I really want to help people. I want to speak well. I want to live in kindness, harmlessness. You can get out of 3D evolution that way, but that's nowhere near complete and perfect enlightenment. Yes, I agree. I, I do a lot of healing work. I use uh, chakras in my healing work. I have a lot of people who just want to focus on, you know, heart chakra, throat chakra, the third eye, especially the third eye in the crown. I find that most of our baggage is in the bottom three chakras. There's of so course. much to clear there. Of course, of course. And, you know, soul evolution or personal transformation is not a do me affair. It's not a matter of do me. You can't do another's transformation. And even, you know, sending energy. And Jesus said, you know, to those that he healed, uh, your faith healed you, not me. And in the raw material, they talk, you know, only self heals the self. Um, even a great healer, uh, and even when they can transmit energy, can, will lead to healing only to the degree you can request it. You can, you can receive it. You can integrate it. Yeah. And so you, you can send energy to people and they feel a little bit better. But what about their own emotional, old emotional wounding? What about the development of wisdom? <laughs> what about their emotional triggerability and triggerings? If that's not gone, then they still have lower triad blockages. Oh, absolutely. We are all 100% responsible for our own path. We see healers to kind of open the door or help shift perception, awareness, acceptance even to actually take those further steps. A healer is not responsible for your healing. Right. A, a healer is the catalyst to deeper self-healing. Exactly. Exactly. Now, I was curious, at, as you were talking about Earth being the place of the lower triad of chakras, do you think humanity as a whole would be considered to have chakras and that there would be a particular chakra maybe that we're like really experiencing or developing while we're here in this plane? Sure, of course. You know, the model that I teach, which is what I've come to develop, which is an integration of Buddhist cosmology, the raw material metaphysics, uh, Western theosophy, a bit of Hindu cosmology or Advaita Vedanta, 
basically is a seven-dimensional model. And at each dimensional, the seven chakras represent sort of energy vortices associated with a, a sequential expansion of consciousness. And so if you, you can see the seven chakras like a column up and down, you can see the seven chakras spherically as well. And in some ways, first chakra is basically associated with the elemental kingdom. And so there are different groups of souls. Soul groups are associated with each of the seven chakras, consciousness levels, and planetary dimensional uh, experiences. So earth or the human level, human beings are considered third dimensional beings. Yellow ray, which is the color of third chakra, yellow ray activated beings or God manifest in the yellow ray form. <laughs> Animals and plants are considered second ray or second dimensional creatures. Minerals and elements, the four elements, you know, earth, water, fire, air, and the minerals are basically first dimensional kingdoms or groups. So elemental, mineral, pretty much first for a second. Plants, animal, second density. Human, third. Then when you get four, five, six, seven, we're talking about uh, extraterrestrials. That some people on earth are older souls. But uh, in the main, humanity is a third dimensional planetary race. And the purpose of third density is to learn the ways of love and to make a essential moral choice. Uh, it's, it's called a polar, choice of polarity or path. Basically, uh, a, a clear choice of moral values. Love or control, which is called service to other or service to all or service to self, with love or without. And 90% of the souls from the raw material, and I think this is probably so, 90% of the souls in the universe follow a path of love, but there is a negative path. And that's why we talk about demons and negative entities and reptilians and all the evil ETs and, you know, <laughs> all sorts of things like that. In, and, you know, Buddhism and Hinduism and Christianity and Islam uh, all talk about uh, morally polarized higher dimensional life. Meaning there are benevolent beings and there are malevolent beings. But humanity is basically considered, this is the third dimensional experience. And so we're not yet in, you know, dimensions of, of light where all is revealed you know, or where there are no, there is no, nothing hidden. And, um, you know, the light of God, the love light of God is, is available for all to see. So there's a lot of talk these days about jumping into the fifth dimension. If we're looking at chakras, you're, we're totally missing the heart chakra if we jump up to the fifth level. The, the problem with that theory that you see, the people who, who expound that kind of theory it seems that they're believing that what is called, commonly called the astral plane is the fourth dimension. In my understanding of metaphysics, no. And in an understanding of Buddhism, no. The astral plane, meaning the after-death realm, where there are ghosts, which Buddhism talks about, where there really is hell, hell realm made by mind, Buddhism talks about, Hinduism talks about, Christianity talks about, the raw material talks about, all sorts of traditions talk about, and then the higher realm, Summerland, and the upper astral, Devachan, uh, all of that is third density. That's still third density. It's just third density, non-physical. And, and, and the souls there reincarnate here because they're not finished learning the lessons of love. But beyond that is fourth density. And it's pretty clear, you see, that humanity is, is nowhere near a, a profound understanding of love. And fifth chakra, fifth density is associated with wisdom. You don't get to fifth density unless you're finished with fourth density. You can't develop wisdom fully unless you profoundly really know what love is. And how many people even know that? How many new age people even know that? How many healers even know that? Who can speak, who can speak at length on love? Very few people. I actually think love that essence of love scott is not communicable through words i've actually had an experience of divine love and it's just more it's more than 
a human can conceptualize and communicate to someone else. I can say we're loved no matter what more than we can imagine. Well, you know, the, the, the substance of creation, the nature of the substance of creation is love. To say that God is love is true but inadequate. God is infinity, and love is one of the infinite qualities of, of God or the Supreme. But in the raw material, they talk about, they basically say that the nature of all, you know, E equals MC squared, right? Mr. Einstein said, so energy and matter are interconvertible. And, and in the raw material, they talk about cosmology, cosmogenesis. They basically say the nature of all energy is light. And the origin of light is the action of free will upon love. Infinite, the creator's infinite will, omnipotence, upon its infinite love, which is actually omniscience, creating omnipresence or creation of all vibration, all dimensional levels, which is light, which manifests as energy fields and matter and beings and consciousness and bodies and planets and galaxies. That vibrating, which is basically organized into seven dimensional, you know, galaxies or galactic poles, like the seven chakras, like the seven colors of the rainbow, you know? <laughs> it's no accident that the rainbow comes out as seven colors, you know? Why does the rainbow come out as seven colors? Because that's how light self-structures. But the nature of that light is love. Its nature is love. And so the fabric of creation is love. So, you know, not just we're loved, the, the very nature of our vibration is love the very nature of the universe. I mean, it was a really pivotal experience, uh, kind of mystical experience that uh, took me to another place and another time where there was no time and there was no place and there was only love. And just when you thought there was, that's all the love you could have, there'd be another wave of love. It was just really, really life-changing yeah, for me. That that, that love is a little bit more than fourth chakra um, consciousness and energy. That's actually um, more, I'm in my experience, that's more associated with joy and unity. It's basically joy associated with the joy of infinite love. But there's an experience of unity there. I can't say that I felt joyful when I was there, which is really interesting. You would think that I would, but I was in a time in my life where I had quite a bit of uh, trauma that I was dealing through, and mm. there was definitely unity. There was definitely unity consciousness, and it was just like the very fibers of the universe were just embracing me and loving me, and it's not any kind of human love that... Right. Actually, that's higher than fourth chakra. Yeah. But, but the next step for humanity is to learn <laughs> how to be loving, you know? How many mothers and fathers and friends and know how to really love? How many people really know what it is? And, and you know, I mean, I've done counseling for 30 years, and, um, you know, I keep learning by studying and meditating and doing work and, you know, introspection. And my understanding that love is unconditional acceptance, it's basically absolute uh, allowing non-control. Um, and in personal experience, it's really about whatever I feel I allow to be. My pain, my angst, my rage, my fear, my neurotic patterns, my preferences, whatever it is, initially, I meet it with unconditional acceptance. I let it be, not I try to let it go not I suppress, and not I embroider and make a big narrative out of it. I let it be. This then I better and, and, you know, apply wisdom and, and choice. This reminds me of a message I received that, you know, forgiveness is very healing, and yet there's a level above that where you don't even need to forgive. You only have compassion. Sure. Yeah, well... You know, the people say, oh, God, God forgives you, or Jesus forgives you. Well, they never blamed you in the first place. 
<laughs> there's no need for forgiveness if there's no blame. And so there's no need, you know, uh, of course God loves you. The question is, do you love you? Of course, <laughs> and God doesn't even forgive you because God never blamed you in the first place or the creator. But the point is, do you forgive you? Yeah, yeah, the universe loves you. <laughs> do you love you? Do you know what love is? And if you don't, you get caught up in that third dimensional manifestation of hell, reincarnation, karma. Well, the way, you know, Jesus, Jesus was the teacher of the path out of third density reincarnation. You know, Jesus was the world teacher for not just the West, but all the world to show the way to the kingdom of heaven on earth. <laughs> which is called the new age, which is fourth density, which is fourth chakra, which is heart chakra, which is love, which is associated with no longer needing to reincarnate in physical body. Ascension. Graduating from the third density level, the meek inheriting the earth, rebirth, <laughs> basically the second birth. The second birth is, is in some ways the end of death. And that then leads beings to be reborn and never need to come and live in a physical body anymore, they go to fourth density. It's called harvest or graduation. So I have a question about that, Scott, just before we end up. And that being, eventually, we're going to get to fourth chakra, state of being. Well, we'd say that all souls get to fourth density eventually. So my question to you was, do you, do you see that as an individual journey that each soul has to travel that in its own path, in its own time? Or is this something that might be like a species evolutionary jump? Well, there's planetary dimensional shift. And that's what we're going through right now. This is the end of the third density cycle on this planet at this time. However, not everyone will ascend or enter the kingdom of heaven on earth or make the grade. Uh, this is a beings basically harvest out of third density or graduate by their own efforts. You know, God loves you, yeah. And God, you know, there's grace everywhere, sure. But you gotta demonstrate, you know, adequate love and harmlessness and virtue <laughs> to be able to, uh, you know, ascend to the next dimensional level uh, otherwise, souls will repeat their density on other planets. So, uh, no, it's an individual matter, even though the planet is making its own evolutionary leap to uh, a fourth dimensional condition. Well, Scott, you have given us lots to think about today. So I thank you and appreciate our conversation. You're welcome. Thank you very much. It was nice talking with you. Would you like to share uh, your social media or contact information sure i'm not on facebook i'm not on twitter i do personal sessions by skype i don't do a lot of email exchange with people i mean i'm not i'm not that interested in long email if people want to uh, interested in personal sessions uh, my email is scott at scott .com. that's scott s-c-o-t-t -T, at scott mandelker which is s-c-o-t-t m-a-n-d-e-l-k-e-r.com and I have a YouTube channel, everything's free there, of course, and that's 700 videos. And that's TWS Mandelker, or just Google my name or look on YouTube. And then I have a few websites and lots and lots of free PDF documents. And even my third book is available for free as PDF. So, and that's, that's it. You know, that's my uh, worldly presence. So we'll put the links in the show notes for easy access. I hope you've enjoyed this episode yes. of exploring the mystical side of life please check out some of our other podcasts you'll find us on youtube itunes anchor.fm and on facebook you'll find me at thoughtchange.com and i look forward to seeing you again next time bye for now good night everyone